What's up, babes? It's Alex or Biakai here. I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I'm excited to announce that I am still not going to consistently upload. Why are people cheering? At the Smite World Championship, Hyrez announced that they will be making a sequel to Smite, literally called, well, Smite 2. This video isn't about Smite 2 as a concept, but more so about how Hyrez is attempting to compensate players that purchase Smite 1 skins with real money. This is because Hyrus stated that it is very impractical to try and remake every single Smite 1 skin for Smite 2. And understandably so, a lot of people are upset. While I do understand frustrations, some people are going as far as to call Smite 2's entire existence a scam, and they want a lot more compensation than what's being offered. I truly believe that a lot of the hate Hyrez has been getting is unwarranted, so this video is going to briefly go over what Smite 2 is, how they plan to compensate Smite 1 players, and why many people, in my opinion, are overreacting. As always, feel free to leave a comment and debate this topic, but just please keep it civil. And also, for anyone that might be brand new to Smite that doesn't know a lot about Smite or Smite 2, when I'm referring to something called gems, that is the currency in Smite that you have to pay real money for. And these gems are used to purchase in-game items. Before going any further, I really do want to emphasize that I do completely understand the frustration, because yeah, no, it 100% sucks ass that you might have a favorite skin in Smite 1 that you did spend real money on that you won't be able to use in Smite 2. I get that, and I do feel for people that are very frustrated by this. But I also think many, many people are overreacting. Firstly, I need everyone to understand that we are all essentially getting a better version of Smite completely for free. Smite 1 was made on Unreal Engine 3, and Smite 2 is skipping Unreal Engine 4 and being made on Unreal Engine 5. This allows for improved graphics, better optimization, and allows for fundamental changes that literally cannot exist in Smite 1. An extremely easy example of these fundamental changes that can exist in Smite 1 is dynamic geometry. Like, just look at Ymir's second ability in Smite 2. It blends in with the ground itself, looks a lot more seamless, but then compare that to Smite 1, where it's kind of just like a layer of ice on top of a layer of ground. The seamlessness seen in Smite 2 just cannot exist in Smite 1 due to the outdated tools Hyrus has to work with. And that's just one example of many. All of this you are getting completely for free, there isn't a price tag on Smite 2, and most setups should be able to run Smite 2 pretty similarly to how your setup currently runs Smite 1. And it's also worth noting that Smite 1 will still be supported by Hi-Rez alongside Smite 2, at least for the foreseeable future. So if you want absolutely nothing to do with Smite 2, Smite 1 will still be there. That being said, let's look at how hi is trying to compensate players that spent money on Smite 1. For every gem you've spent in Smite 1, hi will be giving you one Legacy Gem. These gems can be used for up to 50% of a purchase on most Smite 2 skins, and the other 50% has to be paid using, well, actual Smite 2 gems. You'll receive Legacy Gems in Smite 2 equal to every single gem you've ever spent in Smite 1, free or purchased. Your Legacy Gems can be used to pay for 50% of most in-game purchases in Smite 2. So things like events, skins, battle passes, and Smite 2 will all be half off until you spend all of your Legacy Gems. You will receive double the Legacy Gems if you purchase any Smite 2 Founders Pack, and the way they're wording this, it's kind of like the Ultimate God Pack for Smite 1. And if you purchase any Smite 2 Founders Packs, we'll give you double your Legacy Gems, giving you the equivalent purchasing power to the gems you already spent in Smite 1. On top of this, every skin released in Year 11 of Smite 1 are called cross-gen skins. What this means is that every skin released in Year 11 will transfer to Smite 2. There's something else brand new coming to Smite in Year 11 cross-gen skins. With Smite 2 approaching, we built a whole new skin production pipeline to make content that you'll get both in Smite 1 and in Smite 2. Also, hi does plan on porting specific Smite 1 skins into Smite 2, and that will also be 100% purchasable with Legacy Gems. Because we want to make sure all the content that goes into Smite 2 is strictly better, it takes about two months of work to get one skin from Smite to Smite 2. And that's if we just port it with effects, without making other meaningful improvements. To just port every skin to Smite 2, it would take about 246 person years of work. And we couldn't do that and make Smite 2 as amazing as we knew it could be if we started fresh. If Bun Hats isn't ported to Smite 2, then I am going to find the nearest building and jump off of it head first. So I'm going to stop right here for a second to criticize hi -Riz. You might have noticed that I claimed that Smite 1 transfer skins are fully purchasable with Legacy Gems, but I didn't show a clip to prove that. That's because it's just, well, 
not in the video. I think a lot of the misinformation is going around could be due to high res either poorly explaining something or just not explaining it at all. And also, if you are going to start a video segment explaining why your Smite 1 skins will not transfer to Smite 2 and you're being compensated with legacy gems, maybe you should fucking start the segment with what you can fully purchase with legacy gems. Start with the free shit that you're giving to the community and then transition to the discount. Even if this was all perfectly explained, the link that they provide to the FAQ is wrong. Following the URL they provide just brings you to the Smite 2 homepage, not the FAQ. The actual URL, which will be in my video description, but not the keynote description, has an S at the end. So it's this exact URL you see on screen, but it's FAQS not at just FAQ. I understand small mistakes, but Jesus Christ, you'd think they'd quadruple check this shit when providing information about the sequel to your most popular game. I've already forwarded this to Hi-Rez, so I'm hoping at least the URL is fixed, but holy shit, dude. Editor Biakai here. I actually tweeted about this and they did fix it as of the morning of the 23rd. So that's good, but the fact that this keynote has been seen by over 300,000 people and the URL was not working for almost two weeks is a little bit ridiculous. But it should be fixed now. Just another reminder that I am the glue holding this game together, and you're welcome for fixing Smite 2. So with this context in mind, I do understand, at least to a certain extent, how people could have gotten misinformed, but I don't think that really excuses the claims or the rude comments basically saying Hi-Rez is scamming their players or that they're being extremely greedy or just straight up spreading misinformation that some people are just making up because if you aren't fully sure about something it's okay to ask a question or just do your own research legacy gems plus discount cannot buy a single skin on their own 13 people liked this comment 13 if hires was porting like a shit ton of skins from smite one and then reselling them even at a discount then yeah i think this concern would be extremely reasonable but they aren't doing that they're allowing a 50% discount on most new skins that nobody owns and allowing you to purchase certain ported skins and cross-gen skins with legacy gems. Ultimately, Hyrez needs to accomplish two things that I think everyone can agree on. They need to compensate the players and they need to make money. I don't think people fully understand the second point because way too many people are trying to argue that every skin in Smite 2 should be purchasable with legacy gems for the same amount of gems that it would normally cost if it were a normal gem. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I hope these people suggesting this never own a business. I think the 50% discount alone is pretty reasonable, and that's not even taking into account the ported skins and cross-gen skins. 50% is a lot for a discount, and I think some of the people that are against it are unintentionally arguing my point. Like, here's a comment on a Hatmaster video that I wanted to highlight. Let's say 10 skins are worth $200. In order for a player to have 10 skins again, a player needs to spend $100 more to have 10 skins. He even says that the skins are better and more polished. This entire argument is just, I bought a set of items for $200, and I'm mad that I'm getting a new set of items for much cheaper. Because again, these aren't the same skins, you aren't purchasing the same thing. These are brand new, improved Smite 2 skins. I've really yet to see a good solution for the Legacy Gem problem that accomplishes both criteria that I asked about earlier, compensating players and making high-res money. So, I decided to tweet about it. I just literally asked for solutions that can both compensate players and make Hyra's money. This tweet had 82 comments, and the amount of suggestions that tried to accomplish both of these goals was like, five. One of the more reasonable solutions I saw was that somebody was saying Legacy Gems should purchase 100% of any skin, but with like, a really high conversion rate. So an example would be if a skin costs, I don't know, a thousand gems, then if you were to purchase that with Legacy Gems, then it should cost 5,000 Legacy Gems. But even if this were the case, I know others would still be pissed. I'm just really struggling to see where the entitlement comes from. Like, when people purchase a skin, do they really believe that that skin is going to be theirs for eternity? Like, I, I, I don't know what the expectation is. And the reason I'm asking that is because Smite or Smite 2 will inevitably die one day. With Smite 2, Hi-Rez is trying to extend uh, the death date there. But at some point, we all know that Smite will die. Maybe it's in two years, maybe it's in five years, maybe it's in ten years. But I think the expectation is that you will have your skins no matter what happens is a little bit ridiculous. Whenever Smite's inevitable death happens, 
you are not getting your money back. And I kind of assumed that everyone had that in mind when purchasing a skin, but people are just acting like that's not the case. hi -res wouldn't be making Smite 2 if they didn't think that Smite 1 would be profitable long term. That's just how business works. If people are going as far to say that hi -res is scamming their player base with this, they would hate most mainstream gaming corporations, especially those that make the same game every single goddamn year. They would be outside EA's office with pitchforks and bazookas. I've been pretty opinionated about this on Twitter, and I've gotten some, uh, very interesting comments. People like you will be slaves in the future. <laughs> what? Two people agreed with this. It's just frustrating seeing people, like, literally making shit up to get angry about. And again, I brought this up a bit earlier, but the most common is people believing that zero skins in Smite 2 will be fully purchasable with Legacy Gems. And again, we've already gone over that, but here's a few more examples. Hi-Rez will port the skins over and just resell them. No, hi -Rez is porting over select fan-favorite skins that will be 100% purchasable with Legacy Gems. I just don't see how they can justifiably add skins that mirror skins we already own. This one just doesn't make any goddamn sense. If someone spends $2,000 on gems, they still have to pay $1,000 to get things they potentially already had. No, the skins that you potentially already had will be ported fan favorite Smite 1 skins that will be fully purchasable with legacy gems. Like again, I'm, I'm just convinced that people made shit up and then got angry about it. I'm not playing Smite 2 because I hate high res. They came to my house and beat me with a hammer. And throughout this entire video, I didn't mention a single time until, well, right now, I guess, the Divine Legacy, which is just a bunch of free shit based on how much time you've spent in previous Smite seasons. If you take anything away from this video, I want you to take away that this whole situation just sucks. It sucks for the players because they're not going to have a lot of their skins from Smite 1 on Smite 2, and it sucks for hi -Rez because they can't reasonably port every single Smite 1 skin to Smite 2. It just sucks from both ends, but I do truly believe that hi -Rez is doing, in my opinion, more than they need to, to try and compensate people for their time and money spent in Smite 1. It's just the people that are going so far in the toxicity just being extremely rude to hi -Rez staff, saying their entire game is a scam, calling their employees scum, that's where I have an issue with it. It is okay to disagree. Disagreements are a good thing. Just don't take it so far to where you're going to be toxic to others. We are getting a brand new game with updated graphics, optimization, more innovative gameplay, completely for free, and people are calling it a scam because they can't play dress up. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Biakai, and I will see you in the next video. Still so cold when it drops, it's gonna be a motherfucking snow day. Hey, boy, it's good in your nose.